The Amazon rainforest conceals a great mystery. Below its dense canopy still roam people groups uncontacted by the outside world. Their languages are unidentified. Their history, completely unknown. Also in the rainforest reside groups that have made contact with the outside world. They belong to hundreds of language and cultural groups, but their numbers are small. Their identities, unfamiliar to the Western world. For all practical purposes, their history may as well be buried in the jungle, forever lost to the Western world. But it's not. The jungle is giving up its secrets, and the DNA within these peoples is linking them far beyond the Amazon to other parts of the Americas and across the globe, and on a time scale that connects them to the history of civilization. My name is Nathaniel Jeetson. I'm the research biologist with Answers in Genesis, and this is the lost history of the Amazon. The Amazon River Basin is huge. In terms of size, it would stretch from New York to the Great Salt Lake, from the bottom of Texas to the Canadian border. And yet, the indigenous population within this massive region is tiny. In Brazil, the biggest country in the Amazon region, the indigenous people number around one million. It's about the same size as the Rochester, New York metro area, but spread out over most of the United States. Has the Amazon always been this way? A population wilderness? In the early 1500s, when conquistadors like Francesco de Oriana first went down the Amazon River, they described not a forgotten backwater, but a densely settled mass of civilization, reminiscent of other parts of the Americas. These early accounts were dismissed, but modern archaeology has borne them out. Now that we know one group of Amazonians disappeared, we can ask the next logical question. Did any Amazonians disappear in the pre-European era? DNA from the contacted peoples reveals a shocking answer. Y chromosome DNA, the male inherited DNA, not the typical DNA test, marks the passage of time. It acts like a clock. In other words, it allows us to reconstruct a family tree for humanity. What does the Y chromosome tree say about the history of indigenous Amazonians? It tells us that today's Amazonians arose on the steppes of Central Asia and Mongolia, from a place where modern Mongolians, Kazakhs, Kyrgyz, and other residents of former Russian republics still reside. When did the ancestors of the modern Amazonians leave Central Asia? Around the 8400s, when the Huns from Central Asia were invading and overthrowing the Roman Empire, and another group of Central Asians was picking up the pieces of the Han Dynasty in China, a third group of Central Asians marched into the Americas shortly before the classic Mayan civilization collapsed. Some of their descendants ended up in the Amazon. How do we know this is true? The same DNA tree that tells this story also tells the story of the post-contact population collapse and recovery. Archaeology tells us that before the arrival of these Central Asians, there were other people already here in the Amazon, but their Y chromosome branch has disappeared. From Kazakhstan across the Pacific to the Amazon is a distance of more than 14,000 miles. Via land through Alaska and down the Pacific coast of the Americas, it's shorter, only 11,000 miles. That's a long way. If Central Asians could complete this trip and thrive, who else could? Once again, DNA from indigenous Amazonians reveals a wild story. Most DNA tests sample the DNA that you receive from both parents. You get more of your history, but the signal from each side of your family tree gets diluted quickly. Among indigenous Amazonians, a low percentage of their DNA links them to Melanesia. But when? One of the pre-Columbian neighbors of the Amazonians were the Incans. The Incans' own history describes a voyage into the Pacific, one that brought back surprising booty. In their own words, black people. This account wasn't myth or fantasy. Later parts read like straightforward history. They describe events we can all relate to. All of this transpired in the AD 1300s to 1400s. The Incan account also describes the failure of the Incans to conquer the rainforests and how their enemies resisted them from there. Maybe that's how their captive people got into the Amazon. They threw off the shackles of their captivity, joined up with other peoples in the Amazon, and resisted the Incan Empire. How do we know that this is true? The timing of the beginning of the Incan account agrees with the timing from Y-chromosome DNA. That's too much of a coincidence to chalk up 
to chance. Presumably, these Melanesian arrivals were few in number. Modern Amazonians don't look like Melanesians, but a small percentage of indigenous Amazonian DNA does. People like this were once in the Amazon. They were few in number, outnumbered by the indigenous Amazonians, but all this transpired before Europeans arrived. Who were the first Amazonians? We don't have their Y chromosome DNA, we don't have Incan histories to help us, but we do have archaeology. And like DNA and indigenous histories, archaeology implies long distance connections that we'd never dream of. The early Amazonians built geometric earthworks. Who built these earthworks? Or these earthworks? Or these earthworks? They weren't built in South America. Instead, they were built nearly in my own backyard, in North America, just north of me, in the state of Ohio. The Amazonian geoglyphs eventually disappeared and were followed by other earthworks, like mounded ring villages. The North American geometric earthworks, the Hopewell culture, also disappeared and were replaced by the effigy mound building culture who built not geometric shapes, but animal-like mounds in the shape of birds and bears. The Amazonian geoglyphs peaked before the Central Asian invaders arrived. The North American geoglyphs followed a similar pattern. Could the same pre-Columbian, pre-Central Asian invasion peoples have been connected across the entire American hemisphere? Archaeology implies that the answer is yes. What about the uncontacted Amazonians? What is their history? Surely they share a history with their contacted Amazonian neighbors. Surely we already know some of the uncontacted story from the contacted peoples, but not all of it. For the rest of the story, as we discover it, stay up to date with the latest research findings by following my YouTube channel. For the backstory to this research, follow the Answers in Genesis YouTube channel. Our first series of videos from 2020, The New History of the Human Race. Our next series from 2022, Traced Human DNA's Big Surprise. And our most recent series on pre-Columbian North America from 2023, titled The Lost History of North America. For extensive scientific justification and documentation for these conclusions, see my books, Traced, Human DNA's Big Surprise, and Replacing Darwin, The New Origin of Species. If you're of Amazonian heritage and wish to participate in future research, you can contact me directly by going to this link, clicking on the button, or scrolling down to the message box. These messages go directly to my own email inbox, and we can correspond that way. You can also keep up with me on social media. This has been the lost history of the Amazon.